Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to be analyzing customer data from a shopping center to develop a marketing campaign. I will use our data analyst skills to do this. So, put some libraries. I have to get started, and just to mention, go to Kaggle to get the data set here. I do have it on my repository to download, easy peasy for you. Uh, follow me on Facebook, and don't forget to press the new next project. I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, so getting started, we're gonna import our libraries. That would typical data science libraries. We're going to use pandas to read the CSV. And this is from the uh, my repository. So we can run this cell. Let's download this. And df. So we write our CSV. And we take a peek at the head. And we get to see uh, the intro. So we're dealing with different data, education, marital status, income, children, teens. Uh, the date of the customer and the amount 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 of wine fruits products uh fish and sweets gold uh, number of deals purchased number of web purchases catalog purchase store purchase visits per month and whether they bought campaign one and so we've got a lot of data to go through and see if we can help them develop a uh, Marketing campaign or a few ideas for marketing campaign. Better than better to give more than one idea. Uh, and so here we look at the head, we look at the shapes. We have 2,242 rows, 28 columns. DF.head to look at our data types. And we have mainly integers, a couple objects, or sorry, three objects, and a few rows. Okay. So here I like to make prettier graphics and I use, we'll use Matplotlib and, 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 and Seaborn today as well. So I like to just use, change, change it up a little bit instead of just using the standard defaults, style. So import Matplotlib, matplotlib.style.use. Okay. We're going to use ggplot, which is uh, from, or based on the library from the R library, from the coding language R. And so ggplot is from that, that language. So here we're going to do is, to also be a little bit different, we're going to define a palette and we'll use this as we go through. So we just put different colors. I went to colormind.io and downloaded just loads of different colors. You can change this up if you want to. Okay, so we download a palette. I like to just be able to get four so I can get the same color every time. So here we're going to do four feet, just short for feature, four feet in df.columns. So this is a list of the column names. If df and that feature the column the series the one column at a time if the data type is an object then what we're going to do is df dot df feet dot value underscore counts and then we'll go plot kind bar and we can get some extra spaces right there big size Title equals and I think we put the feature name there, and we'll go color palette. We're going to choose the first position, so we're going to choose this color, and it gives a lot of freedom flexibility to choose different colors. Okay, so there we go. And let's run, and then else if it's not an object, right? So if it's anything else but an object will be numeric, and so we'll just do I hit the script so we'll plot or sorry df beat dot plot kind equals hist. And title again, use palette one, one this time, so the second position. Okay, run that. With a lot of different colors. I like to just add the different colors to kind of mix it up a little bit, be a little bit more interesting than the standard data. Uh, and so we'll go over these in a little bit more detail as we go through. This is just first look at the distributions, get a good sense of what everything is. Uh, but I wanted to look into a little bit more detail because. Really just knowing the distributions was helpful, but it doesn't give us enough detail to really understand how to build a marketing campaign. It's a little bit more specific. So I started breaking it down. And so just looking at the daytime of the customer, this was, as we saw right here, just to understand why this looked uh, so ugly is because it was an object, not an actual daytime column. So we get this kind of weird looking plot. We just get the, the object printed out and that just doesn't have a plot, right? Uh, it gets kind of messy. Quite a few objects. So these are just different observations. I'm not going to go through all of these with you guys. It's good to, to read them. Just understanding the distributions is important. I always start with understanding the distributions, but I realized that was not really enough to understand building a marketing campaign. Just the distributions. 
need to start dissecting the distributions by factors. So what we're going to do here first, though, we're going to do some pre-processing to highlight. I actually started, you know, I, I went down to the next section. I started there, and I realized, oh, you know what would be a good thing is to look at the month. So I came back up. Always do my pre-processing first before all my analytics, because you never know what you want to use at any time in your analytics. Uh, so here what we're going to do is we're going to create a month column. So we're going to go PD dot date, capital D, time, capital I, index. So index directly. And then this is going to change it to a date time column. And then really what we do, we don't really need that it's date time column. We just need the month attribute from the state time value. This will give us, based on the month, it will give us the month that the date occurs on. It allow us to inspect things by date and see if we can find some season. Okay, so here we're going to go month dot value underscore counts. And so we're going to set up above first. So here we can see we have not, not exactly the same amounts. We have quite a few variations in our month. We can see that July occurs a lot less and we have a lot, the most examples for August. So it's kind of interesting that we don't seem to have to see a lot of customers in July, and that could be something that we want to try and uh, rouse customers to come in during July, which seems to be a low month, and maybe increase our average month, which would increase our average six. Okay, so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the, I know also know this later on. So lots of the pre-processing that you do, you don't know until you get later in your workflow, and here, it makes sense usually to do it at the beginning of your workflow. So you always have your done available and your analysis is kind of consistent once you start. So here what we're going to do is I noticed that there's a really high income month. I kind of made a suspicion that the 666 could be just by mis, you know, just didn't care to enter anything. I figured that a most likely value instead of 666,000 would be 66,000. So what I did is I found this, I did logical indexing greater than 200,000 and I to replace 666,000 with 666,000. Uh, and then we get this and now we can see that we do not have any value over 200,000, which is what we want. Okay, and we can see uh, here, what I did to inspect this and find this out, I used a swarm and I made the size as small as possible here so that we could really inspect. If you don't change the size, you just get a lot of bunching up on either sides. And really the swarm plot is about the detail and that's where it could be valued, very valuable. It's not good maybe to do all of the features, but when you really want to see that extra level of detail, swarm plot is really just how the data is sitting and lying and stuff, but it helps to turn down the size of each dot. Complica complicated algorithm that places each dot in a different place, not on top of each other. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. So we do that analysis by, in so we're starting our analysis by income. So we just inspect this, our income that we've treated now uh, that doesn't have the really high outlier way over here. We still do have some people that make good money and we wanted to inspect those because that's what is the value? So here what we're going to do is we're going to break the income because it's a continuous value. We're going to break it into uh, buckets, into a category so that we can use those categories to inspect and slice and dice our distributions and see if we can notice different patterns by income because income probably has to do with how much people spend and could really relate to our profitability. So here what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, the max value. So max, so our income column max. We're going to go income column min and get our min and max values. We're then going to create a list from our min value up to our max value and breaking it down. I kind of broke it down based on this 35,000 right here, 65,000 right here, and then kind of everything up, up to 85,000 right here. And then this group, this tail right here, is not, not just these people, these people, this tail right here is kind of a different group as well. Okay. If we had more data, it would make more sense to break it further, but we really just don't have enough to represent this group. That's way over here. Okay, so here what we're gonna do is so we make bins. We're gonna go PD dot, and then we're gonna go bins equals our BI, BNS, our bins, our list of bins that we created. So bins are the outside edges. If you have two outside edges, you have one bin. If you have five outside edges, you have four bins. So if you do this, you're gonna have your labels, the names of each bin, 
be one less than the outside edges. So here we're just going to take one less up to the last one, but not including it. So how do we do that? Slicing. Okay, so we'll do that. And so here we got to do this is a mistake. This is a list right here, right? So this is this argument is expecting more than one thing. So usually an S, because Python kind of usually has an S, it's expecting a list or a, a collection of variables. So I'm going to look at the group by values of those. So then what I do here is I'm going to look at the distributions by income. So I'm just going to plot it out uh, value by value. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at a histogram. Histogram. Uh, and so to start off the, the for loop, so for feature in df.columns. And columns again, because there's more than one column. So we expect or expects more than one column. We're going to go, if the feature is an object, we don't want to see it in the histogram. If the feature is the income category that we just created, we don't want to see it either because we're going to inspect by that category. And if it's the month variable, because we'll, we'll inspect by the month variable. So if it's any of those, if it's not any of those, we're going to do a hist plot. We're going to set the color to hue. We already looked at the, the, the distributions. So really we're focusing on the distribution by income category. So for palette equals palette. Uh, and since we have five values in there, only four values we're going to go up to, uh, we're going to go up to four. So we'll go zero, one, two, three, and we'll get our four different income categories. And this gives us, I like this palette list is a good way to set the values. Okay. And then we're going to go KDE equals true and this i just noticed that it was hard to really get the separation the visibility on each income category and so i found that having the kde the lines really helps see the separation and so it just helps really you can see income is nice but but some of these ones it's really hard to see you can barely see the red color here so this gives a little bit more definition to the especially the smaller categories the the largest income group just to really see you can see that the, the large income group spreads out over the birth year Whereas we have the, the second and the third groupings over to the left, while the right grouping, there's there's a little bit over here to the right. So and it, there's, there's a lot that you can see with this. But what I found here, you kind of start to see these little exponentials. You don't really get a good sense of what is actually happening. Is the red, the red is going actually all the way over here, but you, you don't see that here. So good thing to do in this situation is what I expected by group by first. Okay, doing a group by. And then what I thought, because you couldn't see enough detail on the uh, histograms, the way they were. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, copy and paste what was up above. And I'm just going to add cumulative, cumulative. And I'm gonna say that's true. Cumulative true. Okay, so cumulative true. And if we look at this now, this is going to plot the same thing, but it's going to be a cumulative distribution. And this allows you to inspect, especially the red one, to see really where it's growing. The value is growing all over these values, all over these values. And it just keeps growing. And you can see here, teen home, it only grows in the very early stages, but it stops really growing. You, you can start to inspect each one of these. Uh, a, with a little bit more detail, getting a sense here, especially marital status, income, the count of marital status has changed a little bit differently versus birth year as well. It's, it allows a little, especially you can see the slope of these cumulative distributions are quite a bit different, meaning the weighting of the third grouping would be a little bit more weighted to the left, whereas the yellow, the clearer one would be a little bit more, or sorry, the second grouping would be a little bit more weighted to the right. Okay, the younger people, are, or sorry, the people with less income are the younger people born in later years. Okay, so start to understand this. And that, make, that, 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 that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so here what we're going to go is DF. We want to look at the correlations now. I started to kind of notice there might be some correlations with uh, different values, income with different values. I want to see maybe income had a relation to the number of products purchased, number of different activities. So here if we go PD dot or sorry, df.core with 
income the income column uh, so we want to say the date data frame and look at the correlation with the income column we're giving it the whole series here so it's df square brackets income and then a good thing to do here is sort underscore values and we'll go ascending equals false Okay, sending equals false. Run that one. We can see here we get a nice value. We see that catalog purchase have a really a large thing to do with income, which surprises me. But we've got to listen to the data and see really what the data is telling us. We can also see meat and wine have a lot to do with income levels as well. So that means less of those products might be purchased for less income. Um, and we can see team home doesn't really seem to have a lot to do with income, uh, but we can also see here that number of visits per month, web visits per month has a lot to do with income. So the higher the income, the lower chance that you're gonna to go to the website. It's an interesting category, higher income, lower amount of children as well. So to change the type of profile, starting to understand the profile class. And I, it really is good to go through this in detail to develop a campaign, but I'll show you how we wrote down these observations and then combine them in the last step to make uh, marketing campaigns to come up with a few. There's many, many more ideas than, than what I came up with. But here I just started writing observations. I highlighted, made it bold, the ones that really matter, the ones that I was thinking that might be useful in marketing campaigns, but it's a good idea just to write down your observations, put all your thoughts in one place. And then later on, you'll start combining these observations into a marketing strategy. So here I did the correlations as well. So really what, what things are correlated uh, with the target with income. So here we'll look at dot info, get a good sense of the value. So we have the income value, that's a category. Here what I wanna do is we're gonna look at products by the number of children at home. So which products were families with younger children, with children, how, how did that affect the family and their, their buying patterns? So just kind of inspecting that a little bit. So I'm gonna make a data frame with a list inside. So that's why there's two sets of square brackets here, a list inside the square brackets of the columns I want to include. So we're going to go group by, and we're going to get the mean. So mean can sometimes be a little bit deceiving if we have outliers. So it's good to kind of get some context for this. So I got the means now, and you can see there's some variation here. You can see that wine for families with no children uh, is, is a very, very, I would say, uh, one of the, probably one of the biggest revenue producers, just, just from first glance here. But I'm not sure yet, because... Maybe that this is the average income. Maybe not that many people are buying. So let's inspect this in a little bit more detail. Let's go group by sum and then group by count. Okay, so we're gonna group by the sum and then we're gonna group by the count. And you can see here, really the sum of the wines is 583,000. This is by far any bigger than any category here. And this is for families with, one, with no children. Okay, so there's quite a large uh, sector and really could, could be very valuable. You also see that families with two children aren't really spending a lot on fish products, almost nothing on fish products. Very, very interesting. And sweet products as well. Surprised me. I would have expected something different. So it's something to kind of start building. Uh, some value in terms of what we could target to these families because really it seems like wine to families with no children could be a good money maker truthfully to see how big of a sector that is okay so just running again my observations that i'm seeing and we do the same thing again for teen truly i found the teen to be less telling so i won't spend as much time on that but wine is a major generator across categories the teen the teenager doesn't really seem to, the amount of teenagers at home doesn't really seem to affect in a great deal their buying patterns but this is how i inspected that and came to that conclusion so okay so we looked at which purchases are made so where are purchases made so purchases uh deals purchased web purchases catalogs store 
and visits per month. I put that into a list. And I'm going to go group to go sum and then plot kinds equals kind correctly kind equals r and big size and then that gets a tuple so our width by our height 12 by 6 and then color palette will do palettes and then we'll take the fourth position number three and we have to spell big size correctly. And so that's good. So you see right here, oh, I look and see what the error is. You gotta go slow and you see an error. Stop and see it. What did my make my error? Ah, wait, big size. What could be wrong there? Just, it's, it's often a simple spelling mistake, especially when you're making YouTube videos. Uh, okay, so going through there. And now we can see that we have a lot of store purchases are often made as well. So there are a lot of in-store purchases made, but we can also see here that catalog is still surprising. It makes up, it's a small amount, but it still represents a decent amount of the sales. And then web visits is really where a large portion of the, the sales are made as well. So the transactions are made. So which projects are sold together? I thought this would be curious because if you could think of a deal where maybe some products really go together, um, are, are popular together, maybe you could do a promotion to promote those and attract more customers. So how would we find out? So I think looking at the correlation, which, which amounts are bought together. If those move together, maybe those products are bought together and we could build a campaign. Okay, so here we're gonna do is sns.heatmap. And I made a list up above of the different product categories. And so the amounts in each one of those. So here we're gonna look at the products. We're gonna look at the core. It's gonna produce a correlation matrix of that we're going to annote for annotation annote equals to true to see the um the values the, the actual correlation i find that's very valuable colors are nice but you know, the values are nice. so, so we're going to do our c map is equal to light underscore palette and we're going to set our color i chose just a random color from colormind.io again and we're going to set as C map equal to true. C map equals true. We get a nice, nice little pretty graphic, and we can see here that we have some higher correlations here. Fifty nine percent between our fruits and our fish products, which seems weird to me, but you know, you'll take it. But we also have a high correlation between wine and meats. So that seems like a more likely comparison. We might be able to use that in a marketing campaign. And we have some here between meat products and fish products. Maybe we could build another campaign for just our general meat products uh, and have a big sale for those. Okay, so here what we'll do we'll do next is bar plot. We're gonna put products by month and then inspect to see if there's some seasonality. So we'll do four p in d dot com. And then we're gonna do a bar plot, the months, Y will be our P. So we're gonna do count on the side here, the, sorry, an average. And bar plots are really nice because our average per month, well, we have a several months of observations or several times, several years of observations. And so it's good to see how much deviation is there in any given month. And we can really start to understand a value, but we can also see here that the lowest value on month four for amount of wines purchased and we can see the 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 error bar right here but the error bar on nine months doesn't even come down to the error bar on um month four and so this is a really good distinction between these two it's not just that the bars are different heights but the error bars using bootstrap resampling we can see the variation in the average and that gives us a good sense of really how robust an average is, and really where the difference is substantial enough to say this is a noticeable difference. It's not exactly a hypothesis test, but it's, it's, it's a start towards that. It essentially uses hacker statistics to get to a brute force version of, of that. So I inspected all of those. And here what we'll do is we'll do another one as well. We're gonna do this, we're gonna go DF 
group by month. So we're going to group it by the month. And then we're going to select out the products by each month. And then we're going to do value. We're going to do, we're going to select the column. We're going to select out each column. We're going to sum. So here we got the averages per month above by default. We want to get now the sum per month. So we're going to see, okay, so averages per month are great, but now the sum per month could be very telling as well. So sum this value and then we'll plot kind equals bar. Do from their palette. We're going to select the second position, and then in the next one, we're going to do. We're going to do. So we'll notice. I, I also changed the color, having a little bit of fun with this, but it just made sense to kind of highlight this color on the side. So we'll do PLT. We want to do kind of this more. Uh, the the formatting of the details. We usually have to go down to matplotlib to do this. this. Is good to practice with this. We're going to change the Y label. I'm going to go plt.y label, and we're going to say the y label is equal to the, the what we're looping through, the product at the time, which would happen by default anyways, but now we can set the font size to a little bit bigger. We can change the font weight to bold, and we can set color palette to the first position, zero. So we can have a little bit more fun with it, just being uh, a little bit boring. Uh, and then so we have our observations here that we got from all of those and there are just is really really interesting You can see some sort of seasonality happening in some of the different ones. It doesn't all of them But July seems like a very poor month for this company But we can see that there are some stronger months in in the later months of the year 8 to 12 Sometimes 8 to the second month of the year seem to be really strong So I went through and looked at really which were the strong months by each product and, and wrote those down kind of these high season 8 to 12 8 to 2 so the eighth month to the second month of the year, and then the third to the seventh are the low seasons. So I kind of put those all together. I copied and pasted, and I kind of just deleted the ones that I didn't need. And I put from these observations, these are the ones that I really found were valuable. I decided on promoting targets, promotion targeting, meet products at lowest customer in group from eight to 12 months. This is when it was the busiest uh, season for that, but also when the lowest income group had some extreme outliers that might be really find this sale a good deal and really push sales to be quite high. We noticed that gold products targeted were really high uh, in the third and fourth income group. So maybe targeting those two groups in a catalog, which they purchased more from during the months eight, the eighth month, the second month of the year. Okay. So meat and fish products targeting first and second group income group during the months of eight and 12. And this, we noticed that there was kind of uh, a com, those, those months were very good months uh, for fish and meat products. And then the first and second income group were bigger purchases, purchase, purchasers of the meat and fish projects, products. So offering larger amounts of meat and fish products increased low month. So there's a low month in July. And so thinking about how to push those is we could really offer a large prom promotion when those are sold the least meat and fish products are not being sold a lot in those months. Let's try and push them out. Let's try and get those out there. So we could offer a, a sale during the month that we know is low business and try and increase our average sales to increase basically our average income and increase our overall revenue. Have a big impact on our overall revenue. And looking from one of the correlation analysis, we noticed that wine and meat are really popular. And as being a very large seller, wine is a good one. We could do a promotion by offering a, a combo with a meat product that are also popular with families that have that have no children. And we could do a prom promotion to for those two products that seem to be sold together and also popular with families with no children. This is just the start. There's so many more ideas that you can have from this observation, but I like this idea of taking observations, writing them down just as you're going, just writing observations as you're looking at each, uh, as you're doing your exploratory analysis. Then you just collect them down at the bottom and you start putting them together into your promotions. And there's so many more that you can choose from here, but I just gave some examples. Uh, and really, you know, if you're doing this on a job, you'd want to give more than one example just in case they don't like that one and so you can have different ideas. Uh, prepare and there's so many more to go here as well so this shows you how I would go about it how to do it in a quick and easy way really just again collecting your observations and then putting your observation putting your observations looking them at them all together deleting the ones that aren't important because 
not all of them are going to be valuable, but you don't know when you're when you're looking at them, just writing your observations down and then putting them into concrete strategies as you start putting them together. You notice that all of these looked at different products, different incomes groups and different months. So it took in pieces of all of our analysis analyses uh, and then we ended up with our strategies. This is a good strategy. It worked out really well. I think we got some really good strategies here for our customer. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.